keynote speech for today is from uh, Kees van der Meijden. He is the director of the uh, Wensenbellen Museum here in the city of Enschede. And after that, she has not arrived because she is in a traffic jam, as uh, she told me. Uh, Marianne Reegbrot, uh, director of uh, area development of the Kennis Park, which is the foundation in Enschede, here, uh, of which Saxion is also part of, which supports uh, high-tech high -tech entrepreneurship. Now, welcome. Um, maybe this is a bit. Of, I'm, I'm Kees van der Meijen. I'm the director of one of the new museums in Enschede, which uh, was founded uh, after a very tragic disaster in this city. Mm -hmm. I have to. Uh, which was founded. This museum was founded after a few years after a very tragic disaster in this city, which I, I will show you a little uh, video about. Um, and after this disaster, a lot of money came to the town to rebuild it. And that's why it was possible to find a new museum, which was uh, which um, was made up by merging three smaller museums together. So it's a rather unique happening because there was money and there was the ability, and, and, and people wanted to to merge these museums together. So it's, it's a hell of a job to merge institutions in the Netherlands. It's always gives squirrels and, and problems, but when uh, it comes. It's a rather unique situation as these museums uh, went together. So, um, I called my uh, story, uh, There is a Blue Ocean Where We Can Meet, and I think I have to explain it a bit to you. Uh, it's uh, inspired by, by a book of uh, Mr. Chan King and Mrs. Obornier. Uh, maybe you know it, Blue Ocean Strategy, but if you don't know it, please buy it or download it. It's a very, for me, it's a kind of Bible. I, very often I, I just read a, a chapter in this book and it inspires me to, uh, to look uh, across the borders, to uh, do a lot of out of the box thinking. It stimulates me enormously. So I can recommend it very, uh, very uh, uh, much to you. Um, this book is uh, uh, an impulse for this out of the box thinking, and I think we need it these times. We, we live in rather curious, difficult, but also very inspiring times, I think. A lot of things are changing, uh, all structures are broken down, uh, the way of working is, is a lot <coughs> different from, from, from a few years ago. I mean, it's not, 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 it's not just uh, doing your work step by step, but it's looking around continuously 360 degrees and always uh, uh, be uh, aware that you have to change your plans. So uh, I, I like it. I'm 56 years old now, but I still like it very much. But I have to admit, I'm kind of an uh, exception in my uh, in the uh, people people who are just as old as me. And so I hope uh, well, the younger people will uh, well, will uh, have a lot of fun in this out of the box uh, thinking and, and way of working, because there are a lot of possibilities for unconventional cooperation than we are aware of. Every, every day I, I, I recognize this. And in this region, we are forced to think out of the box. Um, it's, a, it's a problem in Twente that many people who study here at the university or section of the university, they, uh, well, they finish a study and they go to Amsterdam or abroad, and they don't stay in this region and they don't come back. Either. So that's a problem. People get older. The older the region is maybe, when you look at nature and landscape, is rather attractive. But when you look at culture and art and, and all kinds of other things, it's not very attractive for a lot of people. So we have to do a lot, a lot of out-of-the-box thinking, uh, doing unconventional cooperations together. Um, and what I'm aware of, that when we want to make this region a very popular region in the world, we have to combine uh, different things. So I think that the cooperation between the business world, and especially the, business, the technology business world, and the art and culture in this region, is a promise for the future. It will attract a lot of people and will stimulate a lot of students to maybe go abroad, but come back and, and work here. So first, I have to um, tell you a, a bit about my museum. And uh, I have a, a small video, it's from YouTube. It's, the quality is not very, very good, but it's rather impressive, I think. <laughs>
explosion of the firework factory in this town on the 13th of May in the year 2000. So almost 14 years ago. It was a coincidence that uh, one of his families and a lot of students who were living in this neighborhood the real menu from tonight. And heel duidelijk is te zien. It was very lucky that a lot, of, a lot of students were, uh, were uh, on holiday and it was very nice weather, so many people went, uh, went outside because when it was not good weather and it was not holiday time, there would be a lot of more casualties than we had now. We're about 23, of course 23 too much, but it's uh, a miracle that it, that, it, uh, that it weren't about 2000 or something like that. Uh, the whole neighborhood was destroyed and my museum is built in this neighborhood in an old cotton factory. And without this disaster, uh, a unique uh, neighborhood never would have built up again. It was, uh, it's, it's, well, you, maybe you have an excursion in it, I don't know, but when you have the chance to look at this neighborhood, you should do it because it's unique in the world. It's uh, built up together with the people who live there, with the many, many good architects, uh, by, by, uh, coordinated by a very, uh, uh, very uh, well, uh, well known in the Netherlands, uh, um, Architectural uh, 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 scientist Peter Brown. So this is a unique thing which happens often after such uh, nasty uh, disasters, of course. It's a uh, fate of human mankind, I think. And so without this disaster, now museum wouldn't have existed. It's called Museum Transvella. It's merged, merged uh, emerging from a natural history museum and two cultural institutions. Um, I show you a, a, a few pictures. So you have. Kind of impression what, what, what I'm talking about. Um, it's an old cotton factory. A part of the cotton factory was destroyed by this disaster. The cotton factory should be broken down, but after this disaster, well, there was a kind of well, recognition for this, these kind of buildings. We should, we should keep them in our town. So it was uh, a, a few new things, like the, the tower was added to the, to the buildings. It's a, it's a very, very special building to, to, to be in. So only the building is uh, attractive enough to to uh, to to uh, well, to uh, consider a visit. We have a lot of um, uh, activities. This is uh, one what we call the museum night. So we had a lot of art uh, outside the museum, and the museum was open till two o'clock in, uh, in the night or something like that. Um, it's a very huge uh, fabric hall, three fabric halls, about 130 meters long, and in this huge hall there is a kind of you call it we call it the most most large uh, uh, museum uh, glass case in Europe, and maybe I think it is. It's about 120 meters long. It's very huge, it's very impressive. And we present a lot of collection over there. What we do is uh, uh, temporary exhibitions, and when I talk about unconventional corporations, this is a, maybe it looks a bit conventional, but uh, when you uh, see how it's organized, we did it together with a broadcasting company, which had a, a, a a series on television about uh, uh, explorers from the 19th century. And uh, we made an exhibition about all these 30 or 40 uh, um, uh, adventures. So, uh, and after the television program was over, the, uh, the exhibition started. So it's a kind of working together, which is a uh, success. It, it gives us visitors. So that's and, and the first example of unconventional cooperation. But what is, it, what is a museum, actually? Maybe I ask you, what, 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 when you think of a museum, what, what, you, what, you, what kind of words are coming up in, into your mind? Culture, history. History? It's inspiration. Nature, exhibition. Nature, exhibition, yes. Yeah. Tourism. Excuse me? Tourism. Tourism, yes. Experience. Experience. It's all true. It's money. Inspiration. Excuse me? Money. Money. <laughs> they cost a lot of money, that's what it's true. They cost a lot of money. <laughs> Too expensive. Yeah, that's what we hear often. I don't like these kinds of things. You have, of course, the right to do it. Right to do it. Uh, but what is a museum? Well, you, of course, you're right. Um, 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 when, I call, when I put it together in, into one sentence, and that's not what you think about, uh, museums, they are the memories of society. 
tangible and intangible. Without museums, we forget. Without museums, we maybe we make the same mistakes again because we don't know. We, we are not inspired by uh, tangible and intangible collections from the past and from, from the recent past too. So I think that's that's. Oh, of course, you think about collections and exhibitions and about a lot of money. Of course, museums are very expensive as institutions because it's not a it's not a factory which makes products which everybody wants every day. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's you should compare with other things. I come up to that later. But that is a museum, a memory of uh, a, a, an institution which is part of the memory of society. Um, what does a museum collect? Well, I shouldn't ask it to you because uh, it's not so very. Uh, uh, but museums collect very different things. When I when I focus on my museum, it was a of course, very difficult to make a new vision with these three very different institutions we merged together. Um, so we uh, started with uh, a museum which was focusing on the, 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 the history and the culture of the region with a kind of binoculars to the, to, the, to, to the whole world. But after five years, we opened in 2008, so it's a very young museum, uh, but we uh, did a lot of investigations, we talked to a lot of people, we had interviews with the public and said what is the image of the museum? And in the meanwhile we had uh, we had awards, uh, we are a rather famous museum in the Netherlands, we uh, are asked for national committees and so on. So in a, in a kind of way we, we landed in this, this museum landscape. But when we look at our visitors, there are about so 50,000 a year, that's for a region that's 20 very much, but I don't think it's enough, I want more. Because it's a lot of income. When we're talking about money, we, our visitors are, are, are a very important uh, uh, money source, of course. Yeah, I don't, I don't be shy. Let me not, let me not be shy about it. But when we, uh, um, uh, what we found out is that we had the association of a, a, a small regional museum, which is focusing on the history of Twente, our region, and that's not true. When, we, when I came as a director in the museum, I said, we should tell the stories about human adventure. And there are a lot of stories about human adventure to tell which focus on the region of Twitter, but that's not enough. So what we found out now is that we should make this human invention, uh, the, 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 the man as, a de, as an adventurer, as a designer, as, an, 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 as a researcher, we should that put in the glass case of our museum. Should that, that should be the first thing that, that people should say about our museum. And that's happening now. So the, the, the exhibition about these 19th century explorers I told you about is an example of this focusing on uh, this, this ability of man to every time uh, make the world a little bit better. Of course, with the many backfalls and many, many uh, well, disappointments, but when you look at the broad history from century to century, you should admit that the world is still a bit more a better place. So, yeah, it's maybe uh, you can discuss about it. I think I'm, I'm really uh, convinced that this is, uh, this is true. So, uh, w what does a museum collect? Uh, well, what we collect is the inventions of man from the beginning until now. And that's why uh, it, it gives us the possibility to cooperate, uh, for example, with Kenneth Park 20 to collect new inventions of, of, of uh, uh, entrepreneurship from the region and, and put these inventions in our collection and tell the stories about these inventions. But that's a, that's a new way of thinking which is landing more and more. So I'll tell you about we have a project with Kenneth Park Tent in the gallery, which, which is kind of, well, this is an example of this new way of uh, working as a museum. Uh, that's what, what, so what the museum collect depends on what you're focusing about. And in our case, it's the the, the, the man as an inventor, as an explorer, as a, as a designer. Um, but what does a museum actually? Um, um, what I should say, uh, with the memory as a material, because our collections, tangible and intangible, are the memory of, of people, and with our um, um, <coughs> With this memory as material, we want to inspire people and show. Well, maybe it's a little bit uh, uh, over the top, but we want to show the reason for existence of existence of mankind. And now you see, we say 
that we want to stimulate uh, in our visitors the longing for the future. Yeah, because we, I think we live in a rather negative time. People are complaining a lot in this country about the future and uh, nothing is good and everything is bad. And, 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 and it's always someone else who is the, who, is the, uh, who causes it. So uh, that's, we want to stimulate people to think, to, to act themselves. So I think that's, a, that's an important task for, for, for museums and cultural institutions in general uh, these days. But that's what the museum does, stimulate, stimulating people and longing for the future. Because you have a lot of examples in the past which show what people can. Um, so, when you think at a museum in cooperation with, with the business world, you uh, should think of economy. Without art and culture, without museums, uh, the economy is weaker than with them. It's it's there are, there are, it's a fact. It's not a not a meaning or, or hypothesis. A hypothesis. It's it's a fact. A museum is a, a platform for developing of skills. We work very much together with Section University too. There are a lot of students which, which are working with us and do, doing pro project with us. Even they end in, a, in 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 their own company and we work with, with one of those com companies which existed out of this Section University. We work very close together. I show you a, a, a few examples of that. So that's it's 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 a it's a, a, a platform for developing skills, and it's a platform for doing experiments. I uh, we sometimes we go with a, a, a few entrepreneurs from the city to uh, Hamburg or Cologne or, 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 or another city to investigate the possibilities of cooperation. And I, I said I had an example. I said to to to, to, to one of these guys. When you develop a new light technique, for example, I think you will show it during a conference to your colleagues with a PowerPoint or a presentation. I'm very, I'm very modern, of course. Um, and then you talk about it and, and you go your own way. But what, what, what about um, testing this technique in an exhibition in a museum and invite your, invite your colleagues over there and show what it, what it, can, what it can do? That has a lot of more impact or show a new uh, sound technique in a new opera of the Dutch Travel Opera here in the city. It's much more impressive than a PowerPoint during the conference. Now, I'm talking about PowerPoint during the conference now, of course, but you know what I mean. And it's, it gives a lot of possibilities for cooperation in, 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 in the region, but also uh, when you look at the national, uh, when you put it on a national level. I have a few examples. Um, we have, uh, I, I, I told you about these students we studied here at Section University at the, what's now called the Academy of Creative Technology. And they made a, a company a few years ago, it's called 100% FAT, F-A-T, it's, it's uh, means fusions of arts and technology, and you know that's, that's, what, that's what I'm very interested in. And we uh, did a lot of experiments with these guys, and they made a beautiful uh, techniques which we, with which we could make our exhibitions and our activities more impressive and more, uh, uh, well, more, more emotional maybe. Um, um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to go back. This is one of the uh, examples, the, the first one, if you were to go. It's a big, uh, it's a big uh, projection wall in our museum, which is interactive. So when you walk to it, 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 it changes. And you see how it builds up now. So I think for you. Today. There's a presentation of the technique by the guys of this company and, and a few, few from us to other companies. So 
they uh, use the museum as a kind of platform for, for, well, for, for, for their own business. So, and I don't mind, because I am an institution which costs a lot of money, so I have to have, I have a, a, a task in society, and I have a task to stimulate these new entrepreneurs to, for, 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 in, in the future. I'm very glad I'm, I, I, I'm able to do it. So, um, well, this is the first example. I have a, another example. <laughs> It's an other example. Oh, excuse me. What's going on? It's this disappears. Um, and it's again. Excuse me. What we did is that we made a program for uh, students from the from the ROC. I don't know the name in English. It's a regional. Uh, uh, it's, it's a college here in the city, which has a, has a, has a, um, uh, which people can study on, for example, on fashion and design. And fashion and design on a very practical level, so not very uh, modern and, and fashion-like, but very usable. So what we did, we, we put up a cooperation between a, 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 a fashion company, between this college and the museum, and it's now part of the curriculum. It's, it's now for the fifth time, it starts tomorrow again, and students have lessons in our museum because they have a lot of collections with textile and, and textile design and, and fashion in the past, and they, uh, they uh, get uh, colleges from, from us and they uh, are inspired by these designs from the past and they have the task to, to uh, design a new, uh, uh, new fashion which can which is wearable for a lot of people which is cheap and which is very modern. So every time it ends with a, with a, of course with a, with a catwalk with a fashion show and one of the designs is uh, well, is supported to to production. So it's a very it's a very nice uh, example from of cooperation between three different parties which which, which make, it makes a difference of course. So I'm very proud of it that it's now part of the curriculum. In the beginning, the, 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 the teachers of the college are complaining that it costs a lot of time and we, have, we are so busy as yet and we don't, well, we're not able to do it and now everybody is very enthusiastic and well, they, they love to do it. So uh, I'm very proud of it that it's, it costs a lot of time. You, you, you must imagine that it's not very easy. When you want to change things, make your museum usable in, in this in this uh, for in this example for for for, uh, for for colleges and universities you have to work very very hard and you have to be convincing and you have to keep on you have to not, not give up after two times but just go on and go on so i think that's uh, that's my work and i like it well let's i have another example from um, this company i was talk, talking about and I, I, in a way it's a pity that uh, that we um, we should have more companies like, like them which are working together in this way with uh, cultural and institutions. This is uh, an exhibition about uh, uh, a reconstruction of a very old animal from more than 20 million years ago. And uh, what they did, they made a kind of, they staged the, the objects in a way that people were really impressed. So you could touch the move your hand between the objects and the surface. And it was a of fact it was in a way as you touched the water.
Manchester. different people from different cultural backgrounds in our region. So to, to uh, break through uh, the image of this region that here only are living farmers and there's also a university but that's all. So uh, people from with about 120 different different cultural backgrounds. So we can we can expand this this home thing uh, in the future with more and more and more uh, different cultures. Of course there's also a man presenting itself in this in this room, it's, they are projected in, in the chair. It's, it's very, it's very funny too. I mean, who's come, who's, who has lived his whole life with, and his ancestors in this region? But there are from somebody from Italy, somebody from Curaçao, somebody from 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 Turkey, and so on. And um, what we did is, it's completely virtual. It's it's there's no, there's not one museum object in this presentation. But it could be made by the knowledge of our curators and the knowledge which we put out of our collections. And we, we interview people themselves, so it's, it's very, it's very, I get really emotional when I see it. It's, it's so charming to see how people tell their story with, with, their, with their own, it's, it, it gives a lot of understanding between different cultures. So I, I like this, uh, this very much. It's uh, uh, one of my most favorite uh, projects from the last uh, years in, in our museum. Because we can expand it, we can continue with it. Uh, and, and it's well, it's it's an only start. We have to continue with it as well. But uh, at the second of April, our king will open this new building and this exhibition, in which about 18 different products from different companies are presented in a way we uh, worked on together with the same company, uh, which I showed you the movies about. And I'll show you. Uh, it's, it's also a, a new way of interaction between the object and the and the visitor, so you can say. Not a little bit with movement as well. Um, I hope this uh, is going well. Yes. Presenting things, which you can do with a museum, museum object, but which you can do with a product of a company as well. And the product of the company can become a museum object, of course. We want to have every every year a kind of festival of innovation in which we can present the new objects, the new inventions which are going to be part of our collection. And that's that's also a new and not very easy way, but it's a new way of, of thinking in the museum world, which gives you more. Uh, sense which makes the museum more use, useful than it was before. Um, what I want to say to you is that uh, um, art and culture in a region, and as an entrepreneur you should know it I think, uh, gives brilliance uh, to uh, society. Without art and culture there was uh, a famous uh, designer in the Netherlands, the Edelcourt, who said Without uh, culture, the, uh, the society falls into barbarism. That might be a rather strong uh, sentence, but when you think about it, it's true. I think um, it's not so. It's not only the. the uh, it's not only for fun. Um, and when we see in this, in this region, for example, there is much technolo te technological skill uh, 
but being attractive to many needs, I think, cooperation, cooperation with our, uh, our branch. Um, I told you the example of the new lighting technology or making a new sound design in opera or something like that. You can really uh, uh, cooperate with art and culture very, very useful to your, to your own, in your own uh, uh, belongings. Um, a museum can stage new technological developments, but also can uh, do other things, of course. Uh, a museum can be an inspiration room for, uh, for activities of, of, of uh, all kinds of businesses. What we, we have a restaurant in our museum and we, we have arrangements with the restaurants to, restaurants to the business world. So there are evenings in our museum which there is a kind of, we invented the walking dinner through the museum. It has, also has some climate uh, problems, but you should be aware of it. But it's a, it's, it's a big success uh, that people have their own activity in the museum as a company during the evening, which is a very special part of the day, being in the museum, of course, and then they come back and they become an ambassador of the museum. So that's what we, what we do. It's, it's not only working together with the techno, te technology business, but also with all kinds of other businesses. Um, so, um, I think that uh, the promotion of this unconventional partnership, and in my case, uh, 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 in my case, a museum and a waste company, for, for example, is possible. So we, we're working on it. We're going to tell the story of recycling now, a museum, uh, uh, beginning in the very old ages with the Neanderthals and ending up now, just that we are making gold out of uh, out of the residues of old, old uh, mobile telephones. And I was the director of this company. I have uh, planned an audio tour, uh, spoken in by himself, so he can use also for his own uh, colleagues, but which is also a very interesting story to, to hear for the visit of the museum. So you, we are going to work on a special audio tour for business companies. So you can, with your company, you can make your own audio tour in my museum because our collection is so huge that you can always make your own story out of it. Let's uh, think about it. Maybe you can do it with another museum. Um, I told you about this walking dinner. I told you about experiences with sound. I told you about new computer techniques uh, uh, testing in the in the in, in, in the museum uh, in the museum uh, rooms and so on and so on. I think you can uh, well find out yourself a lot of more possibilities. But as I told you um, um, in the beginning, and that's the end of my speech, and I think we can talk about it. There is a blue ocean where we can meet. It's really true. Thank you very much. We are telling something about the knowledge we have at this university and the university of Trent. So what we do with this knowledge. Uh, I'm a member of the board of Trent Smart Trenton. It's an organization which has been uh, installed to stimulate uh, entrepreneurship in this region to have more jobs for highly educated people. Can I have another slide? I will tell you something about our region, about our organization, some of our results, and of course there will be room for some questions. Well, in this region, uh, we have a lot of textile industry. We may give me the not slide here. And in the 1960s, the textile industry uh, disappeared. This uh, meant we had an enormous loss of jobs, and we had to figure out something. And we decided to try to have a new technological university in Trenton. We applied for it, there were more uh, regions in Holland which wanted to have this third technological university, but luckily we were the ones who won this competition. And since the 1960s, we have a technological university, and that was the start of our organization called Inspire Trenton. Uh, yeah, can you give me another slide? Yeah. Thank you. Um, Kenspar Twente, what is it? I always say we are three things at once. We are an ecosystem for uh, stimulation of entrepreneurship. We are an organization to uh, develop entrepreneurship. And we are a location for companies to come. So we help business to um, yeah, create. We help businesses to grow. And we have a location where they come to do their business. Uh, our job 
is to have 10,000 extra jobs for high educated people in the region. And the founders of Enspark 20 are the city of Enschede, the region, the province of Oberhausen, the University of Twente and the Section University. These are the three main goals of our organization. It's stimulating startups for students, for young people in this region uh, to help middle-sized, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises and industry to innovate, to grow their business, to become smarter. And we have an inspiring location for innovative companies. We just last year won the prize for best location for companies to come. I would like to uh, tell about this in this way with a little picture. What we do for our starting companies is we bring together talent, the students of our universities, the ideas they have, capital, we need a lot of capital to start the business, and there is a lot of capital in our system, but there is something more about it later. We do a lot of events to create awareness among students and young people to create their own business as an opportunity. And we had an incubator for more than 30 years to start up their business and to grow their business uh, where, where yeah, they can rent more space and more facilities. As I said, we have a lot uh, of attention uh, in the beginning from uh, our system to the financial aspect of it because we believe it's very important for entrepreneurs to have a sound financial system within they can operate. So we have uh, financing. Uh, possibilities for every stage the company is in. If it's a very young company, we have what we call friends, study and fools. They will get you some money and well, when you get bigger, you have more ambitious, you have more proven technology, you have more uh, opportunities to get your money from. And one of the first things we did is set up a system in this region so there were a lot of support for the companies to, uh, to grow. Another thing we do uh, is we work with small and medium-sized enterprises. We have a portal installed in which they can post questions uh, which uh, have to do with their innovation. So we help them to formulate a question and search a partner for them who can answer their questions. Sometimes it's a professor of the university, it's a lecturer from uh, Saxon University, sometimes it's a bunch of students who help the entrepreneur. It also can be another entrepreneur because they have the same technology or uh, working together might bring them a solution, so we do the matchmaking for them. We also do a lot of research uh, during ventures because um, there's a lot of technology in this region in which we see that if the companies work together and if the universities support them on research and development, you can have uh, a faster development of this technology and have a competition uh, so we have more than 15 what we call uh, open innovation clusters in this region <coughs> which we have built together with the enterprises and the universities. Some of the examples of uh, these open innovation clusters are in the Tower of Plastic Composites Research Center, we say TPRC, but it's all about Tower Plastic Composites. You know, one of the key partners in this uh, open innovation cluster is the firm Boeing. And we are very uh, glad that they decided to have some of their research and development in this region. We also have the Center for Medical Imaging, uh, in which uh, Siemens and the University of Groningen are major partners. We have a high-tech factory, in fact the clean room, the old clean room of the University of Twente, while they built a the new one, they redesigned the old one, and the old clean room is uh, called now the high-tech factory and more than 20 companies use this factory. So they can uh, use the machinery over there and they don't have to buy it. They just buy machine time. And every time they need new machinery which isn't there yet, we have a high-tech plant. They can apply for it, but they can also buy new machinery for the high-tech factory so they can be uh, well, uh, the first uh, level of production uh, with the newest machines they need. And there's also a center for cloud, in which we work together with Google, Kaplan, Kaplan, which is a large uh, telecom provider in Holland. 
uh, portals to science. We think it's very important that a lot of uh, companies have access to knowledge, knowledge of the university, knowledge of other companies. So we made some portals in which they can post the questions and we try to address these questions as good as we can. I already told you about the portal to innovation in which the small and medium-sized enterprises can post their questions. We also have what we call uh, a science shop. Uh, in Dutch it's Wetenschapswinkel. In uh, Germany it's uh, the vision stuff. And, uh, it's uh, well, uh, very important for us that the knowledge which is at the university can be reached by uh, common people, by companies. So we um, have these portals to help them to get an answer. And there are a lot of questions posed by companies, uh, by uh, just uh, common uh, civilians, and we try to have a good match between the answer of the question. Well, this is, uh, as I told earlier before, one of the examples of an open innovation cluster in which uh, uh, a research group of the University of Twente works very closely together with uh, the Siemens company and uh, another university in which we try to have more knowledge together uh, about medical uh, imaging. Another example of this open uh, innovation cluster is the materials and manufacturing cluster. We call it the Open Innovation Center on Advanced Materials. In this Twitter region, we are uh, very good at high tech systems and smart materials. And this is one of the clusters at this, um, uh, which aims at smart materials. We work, to, yeah. Uh, the third part of our picture. What we believe is that you don't um, have, uh, it's not enough to have the knowledge and to spur the enterprises. You have also to create some events to have students and companies meet each other or companies meet other companies. It's not enough if they sit uh, um, in the same place, uh, they have to really meet. So we organize with our company powered by 20, some 150 events, some small, some big, for the companies, the people in the companies, the students, so that they can meet and we like that the students know which companies are in this region, so they can uh, get to know each other and they may uh, think it's a very good career competition to work with those companies. Because if they choose for the very large international companies, um, it's very commonly that they start with the bottom and it will take some years before they really have an interest in the job. And if they start with companies over here, they very quickly become uh, a leader in the company, uh, have a lot more to say and it's more interesting for them because they have a lot to do with the development uh, of the techniques in that company. That was a bit quick. Uh, so we have a lot of events. Uh, we also have a soft landing uh, license. And what we at this moment are doing is, as I told you, in Twenty Region, we are very good at high tech systems and smart materials. Together with the companies, with the universities, we are making a better value proposition on this high TSM uh, core that we have. And this is part of the national. Uh, proposition which our uh, Dutch uh, government will bring abroad. If they are in other countries, tell well, we are not a very good at high tech system smart materials. If you go to Twente, you'll find people who are very good at nano, who are very good at biomedicine, who are very good at thermoplastics. So it's a bit of the sales of this region, and we are working it out at the moment. This is uh, our event organization. Uh, it used to be part of Tennis Park Center. But what we believe <coughs> is that uh, we start off things in our ecosystem, but if these uh, um, functions uh, do very well, if we can be self-supporting, then we set them apart in a separate foundation. We did so with our event organization. 
they uh, are very successful, they have a lot of partners, they do events uh, on innovation, entrepreneurship, high tech in this region to stimulate people to meet each other and also to have share their knowledge uh, on the techniques. I told you already we have uh, the hybrid factory, but we also have a tea exchange lab. This kind of facilities we have uh, with the universities, a smart experience lab for RCT based innovations, or Leo Robotics Center, and we have a latest application center. And every time we try to have these uh, centers in this region, at this moment we are going to the Hannover Messe in April, and we are going to talk with the companies visiting at the Hamilton Messe if there is maybe uh, a need for a TPRC demonstration plant in this region. So we're just doing kind of market research and if we feel that there's a need for such a demonstration plant, then we will ensure that such a demonstration plant will come over here in the region with our TPRC center. Well, I can skip this one because I told already. Well, this is the complete uh, picture of what we do at Scanish Park 20. Uh, I told you we are three things. We are ecosystem, as you see over here. Our ecosystem is the bottom, sharp, uh, with all the organizations we work together with. It's a chamber of commerce, the municipalities, the universities, the student unions, all kinds of organizations which uh, we work together with to stimulate entrepreneurship and to help uh, the companies. There are a lot of people uh, you see in the picture who help to meet, uh, connect, help to find finance, to support uh, companies. And I can say that this is rather successful because our goal uh, is to have 10,000 extra jobs in this region. And at this moment we already gained 6,000 extra jobs in the region. So uh, we are successful in doing it. This is the same picture as before, but a bit more dull. On the left side, we see every facility we do for the stars and growers. In the middle side, what we do with a small and medium size business <coughs> and the industry. And on the right side, what we do on the inspired campus climate. you before, uh, we do a lot for the knowledge of both universities in this region. Uh, we have a business development team, uh, which we started uh, a lot of years ago. Formerly they just worked at the Institute of the University, but we made a team of it and we uh, let them work together. We have an uh, approach which they uh, work a lot. And we see that in some fields, there's a lot of importance that if you have some knowledge, you have to your intellectual property. In other fields, the intellectual property is not so easy to protect, but we stimulate the, the students, the entrepreneurs, to get real uh, entrepreneurial with it. So we have some uh, focus on IP protection, that's one side, and the other side is just support for the entrepreneur to become uh, smarter, to grow larger, and to have a better company. So we see two extremes in the technology transfer uh, in the landscape. We see that in the, the pharma, semiconductor, aerospace, there's another situation because it's always a known market. Uh, support suppliers are known uh, roadmaps there are to orient on. And on the other side, there's nano, ICT, biomedical, which is not so uh, developed or not so uh, it's uh, only the vision you can orient on. You have uh, a lot of talking to do to to, uh, to define what's the opportunity for the entrepreneur. And these are well, well, two ways we work together with the entrepreneurs in our region. This is a bit of our history. Uh, like this is told, uh, history is very important for a region, so well, uh, it's always no. Um, we are successful. When did it start? 
it started when we first came in this region, uh, when we had the research group, first we started with business development individuals at each uh, institute, then we formed a team. Uh, we had them within Kennedy Park Twente and just a more approach the system. And we see that there is a lot uh, of success by this approach. We in the Netherlands have the most startup companies. Uh, sometimes people think Eindhoven, Brainport is very large. Well, there are large companies over there, but the most startups start over here in this region, and they are also are the most successful startups from the Netherlands. They uh, tend to win more contests than should be uh, expected uh, just from the amount of uh, startups of this region. So, we always say uh, we are a real star region, a real innovation region. This is just some of the results. Uh, at this moment, we have 384 yeah, companies on site, more than 6,000 commercial jobs. The University of Twente section together, more than 30,000 students. We have more than 750 spin-offs, 40 to 50 spin-offs every year, and a lot of students with a company. They do very well, I told you. 10% of the fastest growing tech companies in the Benelux come over here. A lot of prize winners over here. I think a lot of you, uh, when you go abroad or on holidays, you book your holidays with booking.com. It's a spin-off from this region. So, there's a lot going on in this region. Uh, yeah, I think we really successfully uh, helped ourselves out of the crisis from the decline of the textile industry. And nowadays we really know on the uh, basis of the tech knowledge of or both universities and really successful spin-off companies who come from this region. And, uh, yeah, why does this work? Uh, well, you can some reasons uh, see behind me on the screen. Uh, I always think that one of the most uh, important reasons why Kenneth Park Center is successful is because we are an organization which has its goal to stimulate the regional economy. And we do that with five founders, and nobody uh, of the people who work for Kennedy Park Twente is on the payroll from Kennedy Park Twente. So we don't work uh, to ensure the, uh, the future <coughs> of our company, we work to ensure the future of the companies in this region. That's our main goal. So we are driven to obtain that main goal and not to work on the continuity of our own uh, organization. And that makes that, well, uh, we can have a lot of attention to what we have to do. And always we look what is needed in our ecosystem, then we create it, we try to make it successful. Is it successful? It can stand on its own feet and become an own company or an own organization. So we have more attention uh, to have to other things that are needed in the system uh, at that moment. I think uh, what's on this uh, sheet I just said. Yeah. Well, this is a picture of a very uh, large building. Uh, it's on the University of Twente. Uh, it's the old building of chemical um, technology. And we are now redeveloping it to uh, an incubator. The first phase of it is already ready. As Case told you, it's opened on the 2nd of April by our king. And when it's finished in total, the building, it will be the largest incubator of Europe. And well, if uh, you're going to visit it, I uh, heard. So uh, I work there and on Friday. Well, and if I'm uh, at the building on Friday, I will uh, see you and maybe we'll meet again. Workshop number one, I'd like to give the floor to uh, Paul Weideveld.
uh, maybe you can explain in a few sentences to everybody. Well, you saw that uh, Ms. Veta showed you all kinds of um, numbers, statistics on the results of Gaspar, a number of jobs, uh, number of startups, number of spin-offs. But of course, uh, behind all this information, there's a whole system of measuring this performance. And some of the statistics are easy to get through, or more easy, through the National Information Statistical Office. But some of these measurements really uh, Cost are very complex and cost a lot of time to retrieve, especially if you want to say something on the success of, uh, of innovation. So in this workshop, we will give some examples how we measure the performance of and success of, uh, of regions. Uh, we show how we operate for this, and I will discuss also some of the challenges, especially we have some presentations also from Hungary um, about the, as the difficulty of European benchmarking and comparing regions in, uh, in, in this sense. So it's a very practical workshop and I think really interesting. Thank you, uh, Paul. Second workshop will be moderated by Matthijs Hammer. Matthijs, the floor is all yours. Yes, thank you. Uh, the second workshop is about uh, entrepreneurship education. Of course, when we talk about universities, we talk about education and educational programs. So this workshop is typically for educators, practitioners, and researchers, uh, where we will discuss on the news and latest insight on how to create talent, how to create entrepreneurial behavior, skills, etc. So we have presentations from Russia, from our researchers, from the University of Twente, from the Fancy Lab, of course, where we do have development and high tech and start uh, companies. So that's what we want to do in the next one and a half hour after the coffee break and hopefully we can have some discussions on cooperation with some partners of you in uh, do some joint projects of research and practical tests uh, on high tech uh, startups and also important innovations. And then I see that uh, Professor Martin van Riemsdijk has arrived so just in time, uh, I'd like to uh, ask you in a few words as well to introduce your uh, workshop. We will. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, we're going to discuss human resource management. That's strange because of my, I am a professor of HR. Um, and we do that in a session with a uh, well, few of you. Um, we have three presentations, I guess. One from Romania, one from Belgium and one from uh, the Netherlands. And the idea is to have a look at um, one of the most intriguing questions at the moment, which is how are we going to proceed in the labor relations over the coming years? Now that we have on the one hand high unemployment, and on the other hand, a very uh, difficult situation with uh, regards to how we get people in and how we get talent. So, this is going to be the topic of today, and I hope to get well, to understand what's happening in the other countries from uh, international countries. So uh, I invite you to join us. Thank you very much.